Yeah, we back. Yeah, we back. Now, I've been waiting all day to talk about this topic. Man, I'm excited to talk about this topic. Where do I begin? Where do I begin? You see, listen, I was, like I said, I'm apolitical. I'm not riding for the Republicans or the Democrats. I'm not, you know, listen, I'm riding for black folks, but, you know, the Republicans don't force my hand. The Republicans don't force my hand. You know, now I got to go vote for the lady married to a white man. God damn it. <laughs> God damn it. I ain't want to do it, man. I ain't even want to do it, man. I wasn't even going to vote. I wasn't even going to vote. You know what I'm saying? But them boys on the right, they forced my hand. So I got to go down to the ballot box and vote for the lady married to a white man. But let's get into it, man. We're going to talk about it. Take a look up on the screen. So in case you've been living under a rock, if you've been on social media for the past 24, 48 hours, then I'm sure you've been seeing what's been going down. Right. Apparently, Haitians done done invaded the state of Ohio. You know, Haitians apparently been descending and marching on Ohio and took over the whole state. You know, we eating cats and dogs and rodents and rats and everything in between, man. That's what they're saying on the mainstream media. Now, I just want to say it, man. I, I just want to say it. I don't get in my feelings when things like this happen. I don't get in my feelings. I've grown accustomed to it. Right. If you're a Haitian child, you, you're accustomed to these things. You grew up in a world where you are four years old, five years old, six years old, seven years old. And you realize very early. Wow. People really don't like my people. You know, you realize that very early. Like, wow, people really don't like my people. And usually that's why Haitians pretty much stick to each other. We just, you know, we just insulated amongst each other. We go to our own stores. We go to our own churches. We go to our own restaurants, our own bakeries. We marry amongst each other. We don't really marry outside the race, outside the culture too heavy. You know, we're a very insulated group. We stay amongst each other because we all we got. You know, we all we got. So as a child, you realize that very early. So that's why some of y'all brothers may ask me. You say, you know, Nefakari, that's Celine. You say you only deal with a black woman. You don't really deal with other women, you know, too heavy. Like, you don't really deal with these, you don't really mix and mingle with these other cultures. And I say, yeah, because I don't got love for these other cultures, bro. I don't got love for these other cultures. Zero love. So, you know, I, we stick amongst each other, man. So anyways. I've been seeing this, uh, as you can see the headline, Ohio residents in a small town erupt over the havoc caused by the massive influx of 20,000 Haitians. Now, let's jump into the article. Residents in Ohio are fuming about the cultural clash between locals and Haitian migrants at a city council meeting, demanding that the city take action on the issue. Thousands of Haitians have arrived in Springfield since the COVID-19 pandemic, and residents have been pointing to an uptick in crime, mayhem, and car crashes due to the massive influx of the new residents. In a town of 58,000 people, about 20,000 20, Haitians have arrived, according to city officials. Now, I did not even know that my people was going to Ohio until very recently right because there was actually some knucklehead that actually got 20 years in prison because he was um committing hate crimes against haitian migrants now if you watch that video i had blamed that pretty much on the propaganda being spread by tariq nasheed but in today's video we're not going to talk about tariq nasheed so i don't want anybody coming to the comment section don't mention tariq the only person we're going to talk about in this video is the white american male the white American male, right? The white American male is the one who launched his propaganda campaign today. The white American male is the originator. Actually, not the white American male. Really, it's the Western European male in combination with the white American male. In combination with the European Spaniard also, right? So those are the three originators of anti-Haitian sentiment. The Western European male from France, the Southern European male from Spain, and the white American male from North America. Those are the three originators of anti-Haitian sentiment. Anti-Haitian sentiment is part of European culture. And yes, the United States, North America, is an extension of Western Europe. I'll say this, though. The United States seems to have a bone to pick with Haiti. In fact, I would say that the average white American probably has more hatred towards Haitians than the average white Frenchman. Like, the average white Frenchman is probably nonchalant towards Haiti. Like, we had our history. You know, we, we fought it out. We banged it out. You know, it is what it is, right? But... The white American, you know, he really, you know, he it's like, you know, it's like when, you know, when someone got beef with your brother and you inherit the beef like you and that person don't even got no no real animosity, no bad blood like that. Y'all never fought. Y'all never had any issue. But because you went to war with his brother and you fucked up his brother, he's going to inherit the beef on behalf of his brother. That's pretty much how the United States has been operating for the past, you know, 200 some odd years in regards to France. It pretty much like, all right, bro, I got you. You know what I'm saying? Whatever you want to do, I'm going to support it. I'm going to be behind you. That's pretty much how the United States has acted, especially when it comes to their relationship with France, whether it's colonization in Africa, whether it's, you know, trying to break Haiti's back in, whatever France wants to do, the United States is right behind it. And I can see the European unity in full effect during times like these, because when it's time to slander Haitians, I noticed that 
European men of all nationalities and backgrounds come together. You know, white men from Canada, white men from England, white men from Sweden, you know, white men from from, you know, Ohio and Massachusetts and white men from, you know, all over the world be coming together, you know, to shit on Haitians. And I'd be like, damn, how come black men can't stand together to shit on these white boys? But it, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. But anyways. Let's get into the topic of today's video. As you can see, the GOP vice presidential nominee, uh, J.D. Vance, spreads false claims about Haitians eating uh, pets in Springfield, Ohio. So this was the headline that was coming out today. You know, they said Haitian migrants are in Ohio, you know, grabbing up, you know, cats and dogs and rodents and rats and reptiles and raccoons and <laughs> and everything in between, you know, to bring them back home and fire up on a grill. That's what they saying. Right. We over here. We up in Ohio, you know, eating, you know, all types of rodents and amphibians and all type of shit. Take a look up on the screen. J.D. Vance said months ago, I raised the issue of Haitian illegal immigrants draining the social services and causing chaos all over Springfield, Ohio. Reports now show that people have had their pets abducted and eaten by people who shouldn't be in this country. Now, you would think such a inflammatory headline would be met with some apprehension. Some people might, you know, some people might step back and say, wait, hold up, bro. Are you for real? But no, no, no. People actually ran with this story. They, they ran. They ran with this story. They said, man, Haitian women are, are you know, breaking into our property and, and, and stealing our pets and, you know, eating them with, you know, rice and chicken. Now, like I said, if you're a Haitian, you're accustomed to hearing all type of inflammatory accusations and statements in the mainstream media in regards to your people. So after a while, you become, you know, immune to it. You don't really get affected by it. I mean, it is what it is, man. Like, like I said, as a child, what I feel bad for is the children because there's a lot of innocent Haitian children minding their business, you know, going to school, and now they got to carry that on their back, and that might be, you know, like I said, I don't think that's um, I don't think that's good for the mental health of Haitian children. Luckily for me, like I said, when I was growing up, I was very insulated. My entire friend group, always, all my close friends have always been Haitians. I've always stuck to my own people. You know, the, the women that I mainly deal with are Haitian women. When I go eat, I go to the Haitian restaurant. When I'm in New York, I'm moving through the Haitian neighborhood. If I need to bring my car to the shop, I go to the Haitian mechanic. If I need to go get a checkup, I go to my Haitian doctor. I stick to my own people. I'm like a Jewish man. Fuck y'all. I don't got no love for y'all. That's one good thing that I would say that the constant adversity has taught me since a child, right? It taught me that, listen, I got to stick to my own people. I got to stick to my own race. I don't care to mix and mingle. I don't care about diversity. I don't care to learn about your culture. Fuck your culture. That's how the world is going to condition you as a Haitian child. You're either going to go in two directions. You're either going to fall into self-hate and you're going to chase diversity and multiculturalism, or you're going to fall deeper into yourself and become more insular and end up staying away from other groups and only want to be amongst your own people, only want to congregate amongst your own people, only want to, you know, mingle and mix amongst your own people, only want to date your own people, only want to do business with your own people. So that's where I went. I went the more insular route, right? I only want to be amongst my own. I only want to spend money with my own. I only want to have intimate relations with my own. So in a way, I'm kind of thankful for the animosity because it taught me to love myself more. It taught me to love my people more. It taught me to love my race more. But anyways, take a look up on the screen. This is coming from CBS News. J.D. Vance repeats baseless claim that Haitian immigrants are eating pets as Ohio officials say there is no evidence. Springfield police say there have been no reports of pets stolen after a viral social media post. Officials in Springfield, Ohio said Monday they have not received any credible reports of Haitian immigrants abducting and eating pets, despite viral claims on social media that have been amplified by Republican vice presidential candidate J.D. Vance and many others. References to the claim, which alleged that Haitian migrants have been eating cats as well as ducks and geese, have garnered millions of views on Twitter, with J.D. Vance's post racking up 4 million views alone as of Monday evening. Vance, the Republican senator for Ohio, said he had previously raised the issue of Haitian immigrants causing chaos all over Springfield, adding that reports now show that people have had their pets abducted and eaten by people who should not be in this country. Now, I just want to speak to my people real quick. I just want to speak to the some of the self-hating Haitians. I've seen some of the self-hating Haitians trying to condemn their fellow compatriots basically by saying, you know, why you acting up in the white man's country? You got to be on your best behavior in the white man's country, not knowing that the reports aren't even verified. And now they've been confirmed to be false. But I want to speak to some of the self-hating Haitians, right? 
Listen, the opinion of a white American male doesn't mean anything. Doesn't mean anything. Look at who their founding fathers are. Look at what their number one export to Haiti is. When they come to our countries, who do they send to our countries? They send pedophiles and child molesters to our countries. That's who come to our countries, right? That's their number one export after the low quality agriculture they sell to our markets, right? They send their rice and all their, you know, bullshit agriculture products to Haiti. But besides their low quality agriculture, their second biggest export to Haiti from America is child predators, right? In fact, one of the most recent child predators actually came from a missionary or a Christian charity from Ohio, ironically, right? One of the most recent um, pedophiles that were arrested in Haiti for touching on little boys, right? Touching on little, you know, six, seven, eight, nine, ten year old boys actually came from Haiti. But that is the white American male's number one export to Haiti, pedophilia, right? When you guys come to our countries, all y'all do is touch little kids. Y'all been in Haiti for decades getting arrested. It's like every year another white American male gets arrested for touching on little boys. Y'all claim the Haitian man is so uncivilized, but y'all have a sexual attraction to the Haitian boy. I don't understand it, right? Oh, the Haitian man is a savage. The Haitian man is a brute. But when you see an eight-year-old Haitian boy, you get overcome with the spirit of lust because you're sick. And I don't blame you either because the majority of y'all descend from the white trash from Europe, right? You got to understand the colonists that came to the new world from Spain and Britain and France, that was the dregs of society. That was the dregs of European society. They didn't send the European aristocracy to the colonies. No, they stayed back. They stayed back in Europe counting the money. They sent the white trash to the colonies. Y'all descend from the European garbage, from the prisoners to the criminals to the predators and the molesters and the rapists that's who your forefathers are that's the lineage y'all come from in the majority so why do y'all care i'm talking to my self-hating haitians why do y'all care about the opinions of those who descended from the poor white trash from europe who had to seek a better life in the colonies because back in europe they wasn't shit they had to come to the colonies so they can find a wife so they could buy a black woman to be their personal sex slave because back in europe you didn't have nothing back in europe you were a fucking bum back in europe you were a criminal you are you are a debtor back in europe you weren't shit back in Europe. You had to come to the colonies to become a man of influence. Because back in Europe, you had no respect. You were fucking white trash. Y'all descend from the white trash of Europe. So who gives a fuck what you think? Your, found, your, your founding fathers were pedophiles and human traffickers in the majority. Thomas Jefferson, the originator of anti-Haitian sentiment. The first politician to launch anti-Haitian sentiment was Thomas Jefferson in 1805 after the Haitian Revolution. A fucking pedophile who was touching our little girls on his plantation. So excuse me. But I never cared what a white American male thinks because a white American man descends from the white trash from Europe and the pedophiles who founded the country. That's your lineage. You see, when it came to us, when it came to the black men and women that were transported to the new world, you see, we descend from veterans of African wars. We descend from agricultural geniuses. We descend from farmers and merchants. We descend from blacksmiths and metal workers. We descend from textile producers. We descend from kings and aristocrats. You descend from, from prisoners and, and rapists and, and escapees from mental asylums and vagrants and beggars and prostitutes and orphans and, and convicts. and Bro, you descend from the garbage of Europe. You descend from the sewage system of Europe. They got you the fuck up out of there. They said, go to the colonies, you fucking peasant. That's who you descend from. You descend from European garbage. Garbage. And we can tell you descent from European garbage because we can just look at your history in the colonies. We can look at the atrocities you committed in the colonies. Just looking at history from an unbiased perspective, we can tell you descent from the dregs of society. And let me tell my people this, instead of trying to play respectability politics and trying to say and trying to feed into the propaganda and trying to lecture your fellow compatriots about how to behave in a white man's country, how about you generalize them in return? Because when it comes to us, it only takes one of us to do something and the entire nation, the entire ethnic group has to carry the burden. It's like if one black man does something wrong, every black man across the world has to carry the burden. How come we don't do the same in return to these people? How can we give them the benefit of the doubt, right? When one white man do something wrong, we just say, oh, that's just one white man. You know, it don't represent the majority. It don't represent the entirety. But one black man does something. One black woman does something. The entire race has to carry the burden. Why y'all trying to play respectability politics? How about you generalize them in return? Because when it comes to us, our generalizations can actually be backed up with facts. You see, when it comes to them, they just be making up shit. They just be saying, oh, the, the Haitians are running up in your backyard and, and eating your dogs and eating your cats and eating the rats. They be making up shit. When it comes to them, they're actually doing the shit we accuse them of. They're really going to our countries and touching on little boys. They're really doing that. They're really trying to have orgies with little kids. They're really doing that. The white American male. The white American male is really doing that. He's really going on a plane. He's really flying to Haiti. And he's really touching on little boys. But y'all never want to say 
the United States, the nation of pedophiles, right? But you're going to let them say the Haitians, the nation of savages. But you're never going to return the favor and say, okay, the nation of pedophiles. You are founded by a pedophile. Thomas Jefferson, one of your founding fathers, he was literally touching on little black girls. Literally. He was sick. If he was alive in the modern day, he would be on a sex offender list and he would be locked up for life. But that was your founding father. So I can't be surprised that your number one export to Haiti is child molesters and rapists because your nation was founded by human traffickers and child molesters. That's just a fact. That's just a fact. Your nation was founded by human traffickers and pedophiles. So I can't be surprised that when y'all come to Haiti, the first thing y'all engage in is pedophilia. Every single year, a brand new white American male gets arrested in Haiti for touching on little boys and girls. It happened a few months ago. Happened last year. Happened the year before that. Happened the year before that. Happened the year before that. In fact, I did a video a few months ago where I went down article after article after article after article. White American male in Haiti touching kids. White American male in Haiti touching boys. White American male in Haiti touching kids. That's all y'all do. All y'all do is touch kids. But I can't blame you. Like I said, when I look at the lineage, y'all come from a bloodline of, of prisoners and debtors and prostitutes and everything in between. Right. Who had to come to the colonies to seek a better life? Because, like I said, the European aristocracy didn't have to leave Europe. They didn't have to hop on a boat to come to the colonies. They sent y'all to the colonies because y'all wasn't shit. They sent y'all to the colonies because you was the European trash. They sent y'all to the colonies because they didn't care if you lived or died because you were the garbage of Europe. You, you were the garbage of Europe. You descend from the garbage of Europe. So, like I said, to my self-hating Haitians, why do you care about the opinions coming from the garbage of Europe? This is the trash can. This is the shit box of Europe. These are the descendants. This is the dookie. This is the dookie stains of Europe. And you worried about their opinions. A bunch of descendants of pedophiles and shit. Man, who cares what they think? Who cares what they think? Who cares if they spread lies on us? As long as they don't do harm against us, as long as they don't do violence against us, let them talk. This is the dumpster fire of Europe. These is the trash boxes of Europe. Who cares what they think, bro? Anyways, man. Anyways, let's get into this whole, you know, Haitians, you know, running up on our property, stealing our pets and, and stealing our cats and dogs. So this was the lady, a woman arrested for allegedly killing a cat and eating it in front of the neighbors. A lady by the name of Alexis Talia Farrell is charged with injuring animals, prohibitions concerning companion animals and disorderly conduct. Now, we had to do some research into, into the background and the identity of this young lady, um, Alexis uh, Pharrell, because like I said, we don't take the opinions of, of um, you know, these pedophiles serious. You know, we don't we don't take the words of pedophiles as the gospel, you know, child molesters and, you know, dudes be touching on little boys and girls. We don't take your opinion as the gospel. So we had to do our own independent research and come to find out this lady is not of Haitian origin. In fact, she's a registered voter in the state of Ohio. She was born in 1997. And she is from Ohio, right? She is from Ohio. She is a citizen of the United States, the good old United States. She is a United States citizen. She is an American. Uh, she is not Haitian at all. In fact, the name Alexis Pharrell is not Haitian at all. That is an Anglophone name. That is an Anglophone name. They couldn't even find a, a Haitian woman. They couldn't even find a woman with a Francophone name to make it believable. They couldn't even. But listen, even still, even with all this glaring, you know, discrepancy and inaccuracy, Millions of people still ran with the story that Haitians are running around Ohio and and just, you know, abducting cats and dogs and rodents and rats and amphibians and, and and everything in between, man. You know, but it is what it is. Let's continue. Now, I believe that the lady Alexis Pharrell, she's from Canton, Ohio, and where all this chaos is happening is uh, in Springfield, Ohio. Right. So if you take a look up on the screen, um, those two areas are about over 170 miles apart right it's about a three-hour drive from canton to springfield and so she's not even in the area right so they took a woman who was damn near 200 miles away who is not even haitian and they decided to transform her into a haitian woman a haitian migrant they said a haitian migrant almost 200 miles away is eating cats in springfield ohio and everybody ran with the story Everybody just ran with the story, man. They just ran with the story and they painted the entire Haitian nation as people who engage in the consumption of cats and dogs. That is insane. That is really insane. That's really funny to me. But anyways, let's take a look at some of the reactions on social media. This person said, I keep seeing people claim that this woman who ate a cat is a Haitian migrant, but this is false. I found her voter registration information, meaning that she's an American who happens to be black, not a recent Haitian migrant. Yet people jump to blame and insult Haitians. This person said, 
Whoever decided to bring Haitians here and every person that willingly let it happen deserves nothing less than a public hanging for treason. So now people have to die, right? People have to be hung in the public square because they allowed Haitian migrants to uh, enter the country. <laughs> oh my God. You see, like I said, keep in mind, the entire story was fabricated. The entire story, even the police had to come out and make a statement and say, listen, nobody reported a crime by any Haitian migrants. We don't know what they talk about on the social media. The, the local police had to come out and say, listen, I don't know what the hell they talk about on social media. Nothing has come across our desk about anything of the sort, about Haitian migrants doing any anything that's being alleged. But this dude is so, you know, amped up and ready for war. He said, man, we got to start grabbing a rope and hanging folks. It is what it is, man. Like I said, man, the white American male doing what he always been doing since 1804, 1805. Right? Like I said, Thomas Jefferson was the original, the original booster and promoter of anti-Haitian sentiment. Right. He was the first one to really fan the flames of anti Haitian xenophobia. And then after, you know, came the, the European Spaniard on the other side of the island. And then, you know, the white Frenchman, you know, he always been spreading his propaganda. In fact, I just recently read a biography on the life of King Henry Christophe, the king of Haiti. And in one part of the book, it mentioned how Christophe was meeting with one of the uh, with the captain of the British Navy, right? A captain of the British Navy had came to Christophe's palace and they said Christophe was was laughing at all the all the nonsensical stories that was being told about him in, in the European media. Right. They just be making up all type of bullshit. They said Christophe was laughing at all the nonsensical stories and propaganda that was spreading about him in the European media. So even back then like the anti-Haitian sentiment with these nonsensical stories and headlines. It's just, it's just part of the game, bro. Like it's just, it's just part of the game, man. It's just part of the game, man. Ever since, ever since the black man in Haiti took up arms to defend his rights, man, listen, the white boys, they've been, they've been shitting on us ever since, but it's cool though. It's cool because I'm not trying to be friends with them. I'm not trying to be your homie, bro. I'm not trying to be your friend, right? I don't rock with you. I don't fuck with you. I don't fuck with you. I don't like spending money with you. I don't like doing nothing with you. I try to limit my, my interactions with you as much as possible, right? I really do. I don't want y'all around me unless we're doing some type of business. I don't want y'all dating my women because I know for a fact my great great grandmothers would have chopped off your balls and chopped and stuck them in your fucking mouth and then chopped off your head and then kicked it like a fucking soccer ball. So I don't want y'all dating my women. I don't want y'all around me for real, for real. You know, I'm glad that, you know, my next door neighbors are black. You know, it's, it's a beautiful thing. I live in a nice neighborhood. My next door neighbor, they black. The one across the street, he Hispanic. And on top of that, my family got the nicest cars and the nicest house on the whole block. So, you know, even when I look at my neighbors, my white neighbors, you know, my family is is more prosperous than the average white American. So I don't have this inferiority complex that a lot of black folks have when it comes to the white folks, because the majority of white folks aren't doing as good as my family. Right. Especially those that are voting Republican. Right. Y'all don't got no fucking money. Y'all don't got no fucking money. That's why y'all worried about illegal immigrants, because y'all fucking broke. Y'all working at the fucking warehouse, broke bitch. You niggas don't got no fucking, you Republicans don't got no fucking money, you know? In the majority, you know, you know, the elite class of y'all got some money, but the average white American Republican don't got no fucking money, nigga. You're broke. You're crying about inflation and the price of eggs and shit like that. Yeah, inflation is hitting hard, but I ne I haven't missed no fucking meals ever since inflation. I haven't missed no meals. I I'm still doing my fucking thing. I was I just seen Nicki Minaj in the garden over the weekend. You know, life is life is pretty good, right? The average white American who's a Republican, you're fucking broke. You're fucking broke. That's why you're crying and bitching about illegal immigrants coming and taking my jobs and the illegal immigrants, you know, fucking up the economy. Nigga, you're broke. You broke, bitch. You know, you, you descend from the garbage of Europe. You broke, little bitch. <laughs> I'm sorry, bro. I'm sorry. But we got to tell the truth. We got to tell the truth. The majority of y'all white trash motherfuckers, y'all descend from the white trash in Europe and y'all never elevated to a higher station in life, right? Y'all came to the colonies as white trash. And still to this day, the majority of y'all are still white trash. That's the majority of Donald Trump's base, right? Y'all don't got no fucking money. Y'all don't got no fucking money. Y'all don't got no type of business. And that's why you staying up all night losing sleep over the migrants. Because that's who you're that's who you're in competition with. You're in competition with the fucking migrant. You've been in the country for over 300 years and you're in competition with the fucking migrant. You're a bum. You're a fucking bum. <laughs> you're a fucking bum. You see, the elite Republicans, they're not crying about, you know, illegal immigration because that's going to be that's going to be good for their bottom line. That's profitable for them. Illegal immigration. Listen, they all for it. They all for it, man, because 
you know, they need modern day slaves. So they're like, listen, man, you know, bring them, bring them folks over the border, man. We need some more modern day slaves to work in my, you know, <laughs> work in my multi-billion dollar corporation, right? So it's only you impoverished small town white trash that are staying up all night stressing about the so-called migrants and things like that. Talking about stay out of my country because you feel that the migrants are, are, you know, trespassing upon your opportunities or something like that. But listen, like I said, you came from the garbage of Europe and you are still the garbage of Europe. You know, I'm sorry to tell you, bro. I know it feels good to punch down on the Haitians so you can forget your meager existence as the garbage of europe but you're still the garbage of europe and i'm here to remind you you are the garbage of europe you are the shit stain of europe you are the dookie stains of europe europe shitted you out and sent you to the colonies because they had no use for you you were expendable that's your lineage <laughs> that's your ancestry right you come from the garbage of europe right that's why you guys engage in all type of atrocities that you engaged in right you engage in a savagery you engage in on the colonies because you came from the garbage of europe right that's why they had you in prison in europe see back in europe they had you in prison because they knew you were fucking garbage they knew you were trash they knew you could not function in society so you came to the colonies so you can live out all your wild fantasies and all your all your urges and proclivities unhindered because back in europe they would have had you in, in the mental asylum or up in prison because like i said you were the shit stain of europe most of y'all the vast majority of y'all the shit stain of europe the garbage stains of europe that's why i said the number one export that america sends to haiti besides their low quality agriculture is child molesters and pedophiles that's a fact and we have the news articles and the arrest records to prove it right that's what y'all do when y'all come to our countries y'all touch on little boys right so when y'all want to sit back and talk about what the haitians doing and the haitian savages make sure you talk about make sure you talk about the the child molesters and, and the, the chomos on your side little bro you know make sure you talk about that little bro that's what you known for that's your number one export that's that's your number one export <laughs> child molesters let's continue this person said you silly folks are pissing off an entire community of voters without knowing that alexis ferrell in canton ohio wasn't even haitian that African-American woman clearly had a mental health emergency, but had absolutely nothing to do with Haitian immigrants or the Haitian community. The people who are already going to vote for Trump may believe this nonsense at the expense of potential undecided voters. You are alienating with ignorant racist tropes. Donald Trump, check your people. Now, like I said, man, I wasn't even going to vote, man. Like I said, I'm apolitical. But I tell you right now, y'all forced my hand. Now I got to go vote for the lady married to a white man, bro. Now I got to go vote for a black woman married to a white man, bro. Like, this is crazy, man. Y'all got me going against my principles and my and my honor and integrity. I got to go vote for a black woman married to a white man. But I got to go do it, bro. I got to go do it. I got to go do it. And I'm going to tell everybody in my family to go do it. Like, it is what it is, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, now I got to ally with your enemy because you, decide, you decided to march on my people. You decided to launch an attack on my people. So now I got to ally with those marching against you. And I, I wasn't even I wasn't even trying to do that, bro. I wasn't even trying to do that because I know what comes with the Democrats. But now I, I got to do it. I got to do it. I got to do it. I was going to sit back. I was going to sit back and not vote, but now I'm going to vote. Now I got to go vote for the woman married to a white man. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got I got to do it now. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, I got to do it. Like I was undecided. I was I was in the middle. I was just watching from the sidelines, but now I'm going to go vote. Now I got to go vote. I'm going to go vote for the lady married to a white man. Let's continue. This person said Después de aprobado la migración de remigracianos al estado de Ohio, los Estados Unidos, animales están de claros. You know what I'm saying? Here come the Dominicans. You know, here come the Dominicans. Like I said, man, after the white American male, another originator of the anti-Haitian sentiment was the European Spaniard. Because the European Spaniard felt that, you know, the black African man was encroaching upon, you know, his colonial project. That's why directly after the Haitian Revolution, you had... The Spaniards and the French kind of came together in somewhat of an alliance to launch raids and attacks over the border into Haitian territory to kidnap our citizens and take them and sell them into slavery. Right. That was a joint effort with the French and the Spaniards joining forces. Now, of course, the modern day Dominicans will say that the Haitians were wrong to retaliate against them, because when the Haitians launched that invasion in 1805, where we marched into the Spanish territory and started smoking everything moving, the Haitians, I mean, the Dominicans, I should say, the Dominicans, they try to say that, oh, look at look what the Haitians did to us. They try to play victim. Oh, look what the Haitians did to us. The Haitians in 1805, they came and murdered us. But they don't want to talk about how the Spaniards and the French were joining forces to launch raids and launch attacks and kidnap our citizens over the border to take them into slavery right so like i said the european spaniard another promoter of anti-haitian sentiment going back 200 years right so you got the white american male you got the european spaniard and you got the white frenchman 
right? So, like I said, you're going to always find the Dominicans in the mix. Where, whenever something Haitian is going on, you're going to see a Dominican somewhere. Oh, the Haitiano, the Haitiano. Hey, listen, I don't... I don't pay attention to the Dominicans, man. I'm a Haitian, man. We don't want we we don't went head to head with the British, the Spanish, the Portuguese, the French, and the Americans. We don't want to war with some real juggernauts, some real world powers. I don't got time to go back and forth with a fucking Dominican. You know, all love to my Dominican brothers, but listen, I'm gonna tell you right now, it's beneath me to go back and forth with you, bro. It's beneath me. We don't want to war. My ancestors don't want to war with the greatest of them, the biggest of them, the biggest navies, the biggest militaries. I don't got time to go back and forth with a fucking Dominican. That is beneath me, right? That's like going from playing in the major leagues to now I'm playing at the fucking park. I don't got time to go shoot hoops at the park, my nigga. I don't got time to just play ball at the park. <laughs> nigga, fuck the park. You know what I'm saying? I, I can't relegate myself to niggas playing at the park when I used to play in the fucking NBA. Nigga, fuck out of here. Nigga, I ain't going back and forth with a fucking Dominican, nigga. Fuck out of here, bro. Get some real adversaries. You know what I'm saying? Get some real adversaries, bro. I'm telling you. That, that storyline is pathetic. Your number one adversary is Haiti? Come on, bro. Nigga, get some real adversaries. Nigga, that shit is child's play. Nigga, that shit is cowardly, nigga. Get some real adversaries. Nigga, going back and forth with Haiti. Nigga, Dominicans always trying to stick their mouth on what Haitians got going on. Nigga, we don't want to war with the world powers, nigga. <laughs> we don't want toe-to-toe -to -toe with the world powers, nigga. What the fuck is... Let me stop, bro. Let me stop, bro. Let me, let me relax. Let me relax. Moving on. This person said... The world is seeing the Haitian savagery up close and personal. Many black Americans sided with the Haitians against the Dominicans on a basis of race. And now they're railing against Haitian savagery themselves because it's in their own backyard. Man, listen, bro. Like I said, I said what I had to say. I ain't going back and forth with the Dominican, bro. I ain't going back and forth with the Dominican, bro. I ain't going back and forth with the Dominican, bro. You know, I got real adversaries, you know. I got real adversaries in the State Department. I got real adversaries, man. I don't I don't got time to be going back and forth with, you know, Luis Abina there. Nigga, what the fuck, nigga? <laughs> <laughs> nigga. Yo, bro, we out. Take a look up on the screen. This is what Ted Cruz uh, posted earlier today, right? Ted Cruz, you know, he posted this. Uh, Please vote for Trump so the Haitian immigrants don't eat us. You know, like I said, like I said, I got to go down to the ballot box. I'm going down to the ballot box and I'm casting my vote for the lady married to the uh, lady married to the Jewish guy. Psst, I ain't even want to do that, man. I ain't want y'all got me out here voting for women married to white men. That shit is crazy, bro. That's just against my that's just against my religion. But anyways, this person said he's talking about he responded to said Cruz and said, this is a Cuban immigrant born in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, doing his best to prove his whiteness to his constituency by posting anti-black Haitian savage memes. Like I said, bro, like I said, when it comes to Haitians, I noticed that white men from all over the world come together, bro. White men from all over the world come together when it's time to descend upon the Haitians. Because when it comes to the Haitian Revolution, white men all over the world took offense to that, even though it was only a war between the black man and, and the white Frenchman. But on behalf of the white Frenchman, you have white men from all different countries that felt that they were personally attacked by the Haitian Revolution because white men took a law. So they felt that it was an attack against white men as a whole, right? So that's why you see white men from all different backgrounds come together when it's time to march on the Haitians. You're gonna see white men from the United States, white men from Belgium, white men from Germany, white men from Hungary, white men from Iceland, white men from Italy, white men from Norway, white men from Portugal, white men from Romania, white men from uh, Czechoslovakia, white men from Ukraine, white men from Switzerland, we, white men from England, Scotland, and Ireland. They're gonna all come together under the banner of we are white men and they're all gonna descend upon the Haitians. Meanwhile, the Haitians didn't do nothing to these people. The Haitians only went to war against the Frenchmen and the Britishmen and the Spaniard. But meanwhile, white men all over the world took offense to that as if it was their personal loss, as if it was their as if it was their family that got killed in the colony. You could take a look at Ted Cruz, for example, right? A white Cuban from Canada. You know, what beef, what connection does he have to the Haitians? What correlation does he have to the Haitians? Why is he why is he coming down on the Haitians, right? Why you have white men from Canada coming down on the Haitians? Why you have white men from, from Europe and all these random European countries coming down on the Haitians? Why? Because when it comes time to march on the Haitians, white men from all over the world, they are in lockstep together, right? So that's why I tell my, I tell my brothers, we got to be in lockstep together. Because when, when they marching on my people, I see the white men coming together, they in lockstep together. So I tell my brothers the same thing. We got to be in lockstep together. My brothers don't want to hear me, though, because they, they stubborn and stupid. But I see the reality, right? The entire white world has been descending upon my people for centuries. And I'm trying to get some backup out here, bro. I'm trying to get some backup out here. But y'all niggas don't want to understand the power of unity. Meanwhile, the enemy is marching on us in unison. Anyway. Anyways, let's continue. This person said, oh, so this is what the dullards are up to right now. 
spewing out the 89,000th iteration of the Haitian savage trope with the side of immigrant derangement syndrome, conveniently timed right after Anthony Blinken's neocolonial sojourn to Haiti. Good grief. This person said, Haiti has an average IQ of 67. Let's talk about what that means. With an IQ of 67, the average Haitian, over half of the country, would be considered too disabled to be eligible for the death penalty. Someone at this level would struggle to understand the cause and effect of basic things, as well as to participate in American society at all. Even filling out forms will be hard. At one standard deviation up from 67, we have an IQ of 82. Around one in six Haitians are intelligent enough to be a below average janitor. This is the level of intelligence of poor urban areas in America. Now, Jeremy Kaufman. Jeremy Kaufman is not the uh, the name of a white Frenchman, right? I'm assuming this is probably, you know, a white American or a white, you know, Canadian or some, you know, some Anglophone. Um, variation right but like I said when it comes time to march on the Haitians white men from all over the world white men from you know all different backgrounds and walks of life they in lockstep together when it's time to march on the Haitians as if it was their own great grandfather that was getting slaughtered on the plantation and that's one major reason why I say I don't deal with these people on any intimate level like imagine sitting at the Thanksgiving dinner table you know you you with a white girl and then this is the sentiments of her white father or her white brother like I just can't I'm just not going to sit at the table and, and eat and break bread with y'all. I'm just not going to do it, bro. Like, I'm just going to stick with my own women, my own people, and I'm just going to do my own thing, bro. I'm just going to do my own thing, you know? I don't mess with y'all. I don't intermingle with y'all. I don't deal with women that intermingle with y'all. I'm not interested. I'm not a fan. It is what it is. You stay over there. I stay over here. If it's not about some business or something productive that is beneficial to me, I have no interest in intermingling with the descendants of the white garbage from Europe, the white trash from Europe, all right? Anyways, let's continue. Now, Elon Musk had to jump into, uh, you know, he had to get involved in the festivities. You know, he said, save the ducks and the cats. Right. He posted an image of a of a duck and a cat. He said, save them. Right. Because obviously the Haitian migrants are on the hunt. Right. Now, Elon Musk, a white South African, you know, descendant of European settlers in South Africa. Unfortunately, my brothers in South Africa are too cowardly to get the white South Africans to put the white South Africans in their place. Right. So now the white South Africans have grown so confident. Now, remember what I said? You even got white South Africans all the way from goddamn, you know, Pretoria. He done. He done came all the way from South Africa. Like I said, the white man from South Africa, the white man from Canada, the white man from Ohio, the white man from Mississippi, the white man from France, the white man from England, the white man from Australia. They all coming together when it's time to march on the Haitians. Now we got white South Africans like Elon Musk talking shit, right? Because my black South African brothers didn't want to put the white South Africans in check. So now they've grown so confident and audacious. Now we got white South Africans marching on my people because the black South Africans didn't march on the white South Africans, right? Now you got these fucking these white Dutch settlers from South Africa talking shit. Right. But meanwhile, my black South African brothers want to want to talk about Nigerians and all this shit. Want to worry about Nigerians and Zimbabweans. Fucking cowards, bro. Let's continue. Anyways, I was on my Twitter and I responded. You know, I gave my thoughts on Twitter earlier today. I said this. Thomas Jefferson was the first person to launch anti Haitian sentiment in the international media. This is American culture and tradition. Haitians are accustomed to the lies and the slander. It's nothing new. Seeing this false propaganda campaign about Haitians eating wild animals is funny because America's number one export to Haiti is child rapists. That nation is not in any position to point fingers at anybody. Since the days of Thomas Jefferson, the original pedophile, these pedophiles have been spreading lies and propaganda against the Haitian people. This person said, It was because of the Haitian victory that France sold Thomas Jefferson all of its holdings. The Louisiana Purchase is the result of Haitian independence. Now, Honestly, man, when it comes to the Haitian Revolution, when you hear how, you know, like I said, that is something that triggers white men all over the world, bro. Um, I seen a post um, a few weeks ago because on August 21st, that was when the Haitian Revolution was launched. And I seen somebody make a post commemorating that day because that is a ancestral holiday for, you know, for black men all over the world. And I just seen so many white men from, like I said, all different backgrounds and walks of life in different locations and different, you know, denominations just all coming together um as if it was their own family that got killed on a plantation right i don't know why they take it so personal like bro you're from australia why do you care that i killed the frenchman (laughs) like bro you're from fucking you know you're from london why do you care that i killed the frenchman bro you're from switzerland why do you care that i killed the frenchman bro you're from quebec why do you care that i killed the frenchman bro you're from mississippi why do you care that i killed the frenchman right but that was they felt that was a that was a 
an insult to white men all over the world, right? Like, how dare the black man, you know, defend his sovereignty and defend his human rights? How dare you? You know what I mean? White men all over the world took offense to that. And, you know, like I said, I'm going to take a look at some of the reactions to that, right? Like I said, a few weeks ago, somebody posted, made a post commemorating the Haitian Revolution back in August 21st. And let's take a look at some of the reactions that got, right? Take a look up on the screen. This person said, remember, when they romanticized the revolution, these Haitians were also murdering innocent women and even children. Haiti is getting the karma that it deserves. Now, I don't believe in karma. I don't believe in karma because, like I said, the white Frenchman, he living lavish right now. You know, the white, the white, well, I mean, the white Frenchman, he kind of getting fucked up right now. You know, Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger, and some of the colonies in West Africa. It's a little, it's been a little turbulent over the past few years. But the white Frenchman have been living large for so long, right? The white American living large, right? These colonial nations, you know, minus Portugal. Portugal fell into the dumpster fire. You know, Portugal, you know, the original slave traders. Now they don't got nothing to show for it. Fucking bums. You know what I'm saying? Fucking garbage garbage of europe um they don't got nothing to show for it but for the most part these colonial nations they live in large so i don't believe in karma i don't believe in karma in fact if you go to my playlist i have a playlist entitled the colonial system unveiled where it was a first-hand account of somebody who wrote down the experiences of those who lived under the slavery in the island during under french rule right when it was the colony of saint Domingue, they spoke about the atrocities that were committed right this one time right i'm, I'm just stories on the top of my head that i remember one time this lady who was um who was a maid who was a, who worked inside the house right so the master's wife got jealous because she believed that her husband was having an affair with the domestic so in order to prove his fidelity to his wife this uh white colonist pulled out his pistol and and shot the uh shot the the black woman you know point blank range right another instance where if you um if you were a child if a baby was born and the baby was not you know healthy or you know obviously you know you need a healthy baby to be a healthy worker so if the baby was not healthy they would just throw them into the machinery at the factory and just kill it like that right or there was one time that a black man was sewn into the belly of an ox right there was one time where one of the white masters dismembered an entire black man and used his body parts as the um the pathway to his to his door like when you walk up to the to the plantation house you know the pathway you'll see like the black man's leg the black man's arm the black man's head the black man's foot the black man's hand right so they dismembered his body and you know he used him as decoration there was one time where a black man was walking down the street and then the white colonist got up from his porch and just you know killed him with a sword you know daggered him to death like just killed him you know dead in the middle of the street there was one time where this um teenage girl this teenage black girl she got assaulted by the son of the um the master right the master's son assaulted her and got her pregnant and because uh she got pregnant um they were so enraged at her that they threw her into a barrel studded with spikes and they you know rolled it down a mountain and then you know she was killed uh, but she died very slowly you know she died very slowly there was one time where a white frenchman wanted to assault a black woman and the black woman refused to um, be assaulted so he tied a brick around her neck and dumped her in the artibonit river and i believe her skeleton might still be down there i don't think it was ever recovered so her skeleton might still be in the artibonit river there was one time a white colonist had a black mistress and i guess he was upset with her for whatever reason she gave him like multiple children he had like three four children with this with this uh, black mistress and then he um for whatever reason he chained he chained her into an underground dungeon where she starved to death like I said, man, go to my playlist section. I read the entire book, The Colonial System Unveiled. It was actually published and distributed by the Haitian government under Christoph in the year 1814. So if you want to go in depth on the atrocities committed by the Europeans, knock yourself out, right? Knock yourself out. These are the same people. Like I said, the garbage of Europe, the white trash of Europe. So we're not surprised that this was the behavior they exhibited. Like I said, this was the sh these were the shit stains of Europe, right? This is not the, the European aristocracy. I'm not saying that the European aristocracy was so more was way more, you know, moral or way more, you know, civilized. But, you know, this was this was the garbage of Europe. Even the European aristocracy didn't want to be around these people. They're like, nigga, send these send these garbage men to the fucking new world. We don't want these fucking trash cans around us. Fucking dookie stains of Europe. Get these niggas the fuck up out of here. That's what they, that's that's why they sent them on a boat and tell them go go to the colonies. But anyways, like I said, these men are our enemies. These men are our enemies, right? 
But us, we always give them the benefit of the doubt because we're actually civilized people. So we try not to judge the collective by the individual. But me, I don't care to do all that. Bro. I'm not going to sit here and try to separate the individual. To the, no, you descend from the white trash from Europe. Your ancestors were a bunch of pedophiles and criminals. And and, and that's what they were. That's what they were. Like, we got to be. That's what they were. Right. You don't come from an honorable lineage. You come from the worst of the worst. Like when you look at the stock, when you look at the stock of these people that like where they come from. Like you, you're not gonna care about their opinion, bro. Like, bro, you literally came from the dregs of society. You literally descend from the dregs of society who got shipped out of Europe and had to come to the colonies. You had to come to an uninhabited land because back in Europe, you wasn't shit, bro. You back in Europe, you wasn't shit, bro. You wasn't shit. I know me back in Africa, knowing the mentality I got, I was probably a military veteran. You know, I was probably a military veteran, you know, going ham on the continent, you know, going crazy on the continent, marching against my brothers. You know what I'm saying? Marching on my brothers. And then, and then one day I got caught. <laughs> you feel me? One day I got caught. They're like, man, grab this nigga. You know, get this nigga, put him on a boat. And I was like, ah, oh, shit. You know what I'm saying? Then I ended up in Saint Domingue. You know, I ended up in a French colony of Saint Domingue, you know, on a sugar plantation. Like, damn, you know. <laughs> Damn, the enemy got me, man. The enemy got me. You know, but y'all boys, y'all come from the worst of the worst, man. Y'all come from the worst. The worst of the worst. The women too. Do, you, don't hey, don't think the women special. The, the women too. The women, they come from the dregs of society too. Like I said. Like I said, it's a reason they shipped y'all out the comedies, man. It's a reason why they kicked y'all out of Europe, nigga. White garbage. Anyways, man. Anyways. Like I said, these people talking about Haiti is getting the karma it deserves. If you read that book, if you listen to me reading that book. In my playlist, the colonial system unveiled. And you think that taking vengeance upon the people who committed these harms against us, you talking about we getting the karma that we deserve for harming these people? The innocent women and children? Do you know how many innocent women and children that these men harmed during the colonial period? Like I told you, bro, one time the black woman denied him sex, she tied her brick around her neck and dumped her in the Artiboni River. That's just one instance, bro. Go read the whole book if you want to know what else they did to did to our foremothers, bro. I'm not. I didn't even. I didn't even mention the worst of the worst. I just named what came to my head off the top of my head, bro. Anyway, let's continue. This person said, "And now they're starving to death, eating pancakes made out of mud. Eternal justice for the French colonists that were massacred in this shithole." <laughs> this dude said, "Eternal justice for the French colonists." And listen, that is what it is, man. That is what it is. That is what rallies them all together. That is what rallies the white man from, you know, the white man from Australia and the white man from Belgium and the white man from Amsterdam and the white man from Switzerland and the white man from Slovakia and the white man from Italy and the white man from Lithuania and the white man from Norway and the white man from Denmark. That is what unites them all. Right. That phrase right there. Eternal justice for the French colonists. Right. They rally together in support of the French colonists that were justly massacred justly massacred and listen in my if you ask me we didn't slaughter enough french colonists because they slaughtered millions of our people we only slaughtered like man we ain't even get to slaughter them you know generationally how they how they slaughtered us we just you know slaughtered them in one shot them boys slaughtered us generationally you know generation upon generation upon generation bro like come on man come on bro they talk about Dessaline. They, the, the white man wants to vilify Dessaline. But meanwhile, they said Dessaline's body was marked with the with the with the symbols of brutality that was inflicted upon him during his lifetime. You know, all the marks from from getting beat all over his body, permanently etched into his skin. But then due to the fact that he took retribution against his enemies, they talk about, oh, Dessaline, you know, he killed the innocent French colonists. Eternal justice for the French. Co Nigga, fuck the French colonists, bro. Fuck the French colonists, bro. Fuck the French colonists. But that's the world we live in, bro. The world we live in is a world where people say, oh, the Haitian savages, but eternal justice for the French colonists. <laughs> eternal justice for the French colonists. This man said eternal justice for the French colonists. Hmm. Take a look up on the screen. This person said French slave owners in heaven watching Haitians starve to death. This man said the French slave owners are in heaven. The French slave owners are in heaven. Hmm. Hmm. Now, listen, I don't like seeing no black woman with a white man. I, that shit, I don't like that at all, bro. I don't deal with that. But when I see a Haitian woman with a white man, wow. Psst. Wow. When I see a Haitian woman with a white man, that's a different level of disgust for me. Different level of disgust for me. Because I know even our foremothers are looking down on you like, bitch, what are you doing, man? What are you doing, bro? 
What are you doing, man? Anyways, anyways. Now, this person isn't really talking about, you know, what's going on with the Haitians, but it was a general statement that he made that I think it kind of applies here. He said this. White racism is not increasing. It's always been this high. You all just wore a mask to adapt to the new age. Behind the mask, most white people continue to teach their children the hate that their parents passed on to them. Elon Musk gave you all the ability to take off your mask on his platform. If there's one race that has consistently extended their hands in friendship, it's the African race. And we are the ones who've been sucker punched time and time again. And despite the fact that we've witnessed a literal race war in the UK in 2024, my people are still foolishly extending their hands in friendship. Now, I agree with what the brother said, you know, and like I said, man, when it comes to the topic of Haitian uh, migration, Haitians have been coming to the United States for over 200 years, right? Over 200 years. If you want to talk about the Haitians that came with the French army during the Revolutionary War, but I don't even I don't even count that because directly after the Haitian Revolution, we came as diplomats and we came as dignitaries and we came as, you know, those representing an independent state. So when we first came to the United States, as independent men, we came, you know, our elites had came because we were trying to promote immigration to Haiti, right? We wanted to, you know, go all over to, you know, promote Haiti as a safe haven for blacks that were going through persecution at the time. So when we first came in the early 1800s, we came as, if you want to count those, the refugees that came to New Orleans and Louisiana, but I'm not even counting that. I'm talking about Haitians who were actually, you know, representatives of and citizens of the new nation, things like that. So we've been coming to the country over 20 years now right over 20 years Haitians have been in this nation we are not recent migrants we've been coming here um our upper class our lower class our middle class it's not something that's new to us right like we are some of the most you know oldest travelers to come to the United States uh willingly right willingly so whether it was as dignitaries or representatives of our nation or diplomats or just those traveling or whatever right like there were also members of Christoph's government, like I told you before, after Dessaline died, there were some dignitaries that fled to the United States, like Philadelphia and some northern states that, you know, made a fortune. They came back and served under Christoph. I mentioned that before. So we've been going back and forth. right? We've been, you know, stomping through, you know, the United States. If you read my biography on Christoph's life, Christoph had a warship uh, built in the shipyards of Baltimore, had that smuggled into the country. You know, he had his little, you know, he had his agents and his merchant friends in, in the United States. So, you know, Haiti in the United States, like I said, since the founding of our nations, we've had relations and we've had people traveling to the country and us traveling to their country. Merchants coming to our country, diplomats going to their country and, you know, things like that. So um, it is what it is, man. It is what it is. You know, the anti-Haitian sentiment, like I said, it goes back centuries. It's part of the fabric of European society. It's never going to stop. It's never going to change. If you're a Haitian, get some thicker skin. Don't take it personal. Get some thicker skin. You should have already had thick skin because you should be accustomed to this since you were a child. Right. Like I said, since you were a child, you are you accustomed to going on the news and, and watching them shit on your people in the mainstream media. So this shouldn't be anything new to you. You should be accustomed to this, you know, since you were a little boy, little girl. So, you know, don't start crying now. You know, you, you should have thick skin. You should be extra strong. You should be Teflon to this. You are accustomed to the disrespect. You are accustomed to the slander and the lies. It is what it is, man. It is what it is. Like, But like I said, who cares what a bunch of pedophiles think? Who cares what a bunch of uh, descendants of white garbage think? Descendants of white trash. The descendants of the debtors and the criminals and the prostitutes and the escapees from mental asylums that came from Europe. Who cares what they think? Who cares what they think? They had to flee Europe because back in Europe, they wasn't shit. Back in Europe, they wasn't worth the, the shit on the bottom of their shoe, right? The European aristocracy looked down on them. It's nigga, get the fuck out of here. Go to the new world, nigga. <laughs> Go to the colonies, you fucking peasants. You know, you're not, you wasn't part of the aristocracy. Nigga, you was part of the peasantry. You descend from the European peasantry, boy. You don't descend from high class European society. You don't descend from no, you don't descend from anything honorable. You come from a dishonorable lineage. That's why you had to come to the colony. Any white person who had to leave Europe and go to the colonies, you came from a dishonorable lineage, unless you were escaping religious persecution, but most of y'all were not. Most of y'all were the white garbage of Europe, all right? You descend from the white trash of Europe. It is what it is, man. We dealing with the white trash of Europe. We dealing with the white garbage of Europe. So, you know, like I said, we accustomed to their behavior. When they come to our countries, they exhibit their white trash proclivities right when when they engage with the children like i said before we already know how they get down we got to keep these people away from children keep these people away from children bro we cannot let them around haitian children man you know the white american man he gets around haitian children he can't control himself he can't control himself bro i don't, I don't know what it is about this dude the, the white american man the white canadian man 
they, this is the white man in general, bro. They get around Haitian children, they start acting a fool, bro. Man, we man, listen, man. Who cares what they think, bro? Since when do we care what a guy did? Man, listen, let me stop, man. It's your boy Nefakari, that's Celine, bro. Back in the billy, yes indeed. Cash app in the description. Support the platform, support the album. Peace. No. Feel like I'm 75. None of your team be full of them traders. You know that can never be mine. I'm grabbing a thought when I drive. I'm back in my zone and we young. She said that she ready to come be my wife. Yeah, hoping I don't do her wrong. I gave her my word and it's wrong. I'm whipping the best like a lamb. I mean, no chicken and lamb. Accustomed to call me the man. I never be up on the grand. I'm keeping that way undercover. She want me to tell her I love her. I told her I'm breaking the rules. I told her we making the news. Back in my city, they loving me. Standing alone, I'm a hundred deep. Enemy plotting and still in reach. They trying to make sure that we underneath. Trying to make sure that we never make it. Coming for power, come get acquainted. Coming for everything that I wanted. Feeling like Drake, but I really wrote it. Feeling like Kendrick, I'm checking names. Gotta roll up while I go insane. Got so much stress, I've been gated away. Stuffing these racks in this Louis case. One thing for certain, I'm about to shake. Keeping 100 and nothing less. Stick with the family since day one. Had to stay down in my day come. Had to stay down, but I'm never patient. Hop on the mic and I'm motivated. Hop on the mic and I drive a classic. Haters can't see me, they copping glasses. Back in the studio, making magic. Got a new tape and it's in production. Back on my business, I got a budget. Staying low key when I'm out in public. Feel like I'm 75. None of your team be full of them traders. You know that can never be mine. I'm grabbing a thought when I drive. I'm back in my zone and we young. She said that she ready to come be my wife. Yeah, hoping I don't do her wrong. I gave her my word and it's wrong. I'm webbing the best like a lamb. I mean, no chicken and lamb. Accustomed to call me the man. I never be up on the grand. I'm keeping that way undercover. She want me to tell her I love her. I told her I'm breaking the rules. I told her we making the news. Breaking the road, yeah, yeah. Know that we're making it.